between 1,500 and 25,000. And the claim that 50,000 tweets celebrating Cox's death or praising her killer, uh, that, 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 that all was in the first line of the press uh, release that they sent out. So there's no, there's no doubt that Hope Not Hate, an organisation who were fanatically for Remain, um, and who, I have to say, whenever I meet them, appear to be very filled with hatred themselves. Um, they, but please, if you're from Hope Not Hate, ring in and tell me it's all about love and peace. Um, but, but actually, actually, many people did grossly over-egg the pudding, and I think of that there can be very little doubt. But I wonder what Sir Phil in Peterborough makes of this. In, in Peterborough, uh, Sir Phil, was there a big rise in people being, saying horrible, beastly things? Um, I think there was, Nigel, yes. Um, uh, I hope you're well, by the way. Thank you. I'm all right. Yes, and you? Yes, yeah, good, thank you. Um, yeah, so we, we actually had... Um, we've, we've got a very large um, uh, EU, po um, EU population yes. that have come in. Yes. And um, at Peterborough, was a, 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 um, we were 70% to, to leave um, Europe. Um, yep. But the, the, the or the European of, Union. Uh, the European Union, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, we, we, you know, the amount of abuse that I, I've heard myself, um, I've, I own a pharmacy, and so um, you know, we meet a lot of people. Um, and a lot of people are you know, um, from the EU, uh, from mm. you know, the, the continent, and um, they have been telling me that there has been a, a quite a significant rise in the way you know, that they've been talked to badly um, just throughout their, their everyday kind of um, life. And it's a little bit um, upsetting, to be honest. Yeah, but, but, but you know, um, Sir Phil, I remember going into Peterborough, campaigning by the cathedral back in yep. 2009, and already those tensions were there. Already bad things were being said between the Polish community and the English community. So, so this wasn't just because of the referendum, surely? Well, it's, it's got it's, it's, the problem with the referendum is it kind of legitimised that kind that belief, um, rightly or wrongly. Um, people have taken that as a um, you know as a cue that they they are allowed to express mm. this sort of um, hatred towards them, and it, it's just not on. And to no. be honest, okay, well, like, Sir Phil, I take I, I I listen. I take your point. I pick it up. You saw it in Peterborough. The referendum did make it worse. Let's hope it's short term. But right now, you're listening to The Nigel Farage Show, exclusively on LBC and live from Strasbourg, and it's 7.15. Nick Ferrari at breakfast on LBC. Tens of thousands of new mothers are seeking help at A&E units or GP surgeries because they can't reach a midwife to seek advice. So says the NCT parenting charity they conducted the research. Lucy's in Burnham on Crouch. I had um, a stillborn daughter full term two years ago. Being my first stillborn daughter, you don't really really know what's supposed to happen um, but basically once I left the hospital and left my daughter there I never ever heard from the hospital again. Nick Ferrari at breakfast every weekday morning from seven only on LBC. With Hampton by Hilton making you welcome at over 40 hotels in Europe. At Oak Furniture Land, everyone knows our furniture is 100% real hardwood. And it's also 50% off. But most importantly, it's 100% real hardwood. Yes, but don't forget, it's also 50% off. At Oak Furniture Land, quality and price are both important. So make sure you don't miss our February Super Sale, where everything's 100% real hardwood. With up to 50% off. Our February Super Sale ends this Sunday. Visit oakfurnitureland.co.uk to find your nearest store. Trustatrader.com Washing machine on the blink? No problem. Just show with your clothes on. Job done. And you'll smell like coconut cream. Or get yourself on Trustatrader.com and find the right person to do the job for you. Pop in your postcode and the trade you need, then you can choose from loads of tried and tested tradespeople in your area. Reviewed, reputable, right good tradespeople. Visit Trustatrader.com on a travel pack tailor-made holiday, you get to see the very best of the world. Tour the famous Route 66, the spectacular Canadian Rockies. Experience the magic and history of India, the wilds of Africa, or the exotic Far East. Start your journey with Travel Pack. For amazing prices on your tailor-made holiday of a lifetime, call Travel Pack today on 0208 903 9999 or visit travelpack.com. Atoll protected. Knees and toes, knees and toes, and eyes and... And mouth and nose. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes.
and toes. You already get your eyes and teeth checked. Why leave out your ears? They're just as important. So, if you've noticed a change in your hearing recently, come and see how well you're hearing for free at Boots. Boots. Let's feel good. One free hearing check per year, over 18s only. Do you have a pension? Maybe you've got more than one. How do you know if they're in the right pension funds, making as much money as possible for your retirement? Answer is, you probably don't. At The Pension Works, our fully qualified independent financial advisors could add instant value to your retirement fund. Simply text the word YES to 8322 for your free Pension Works health check. That's YES to 8322 today. Your pensions working harder with The Pension Works. What is the longest tube on the London Underground? What is the collective name for a group of bears? What did Queen Victoria ban from her own funeral? If you know, you have exceptional general knowledge. But at Hiscox, our insurance experts have chosen small business as their specialist subject. That's why more than 200,000 UK businesses rely on us to help provide the right cover. Hiscox. Business insurance for the small and the brave. Oh, and in case you were wondering, A, the central line, B, a sleuth of bears, C, the colour black. This is LBC, live from Strasbourg, The Nigel Farage Show. Call 0345 6060 973, text 84850. Tweet at LBC using the hashtag Farage on LBC. Well, before the break, Sir Phil, our pharmacist from Peterborough said that he had seen a rise in unpleasant things being said in Peterborough, uh, a city in which tensions had already been high for many, many years, uh, particularly between a very large Polish group of people and the local um, resident population. But the question is, not were things said in the heat of the moment, the question is, has it been exaggerated that there's been some huge spike in hate crime and your texts and tweets coming in, of course not. The referendum didn't change people's opinions. Those opinions would have remained whether it was an in or out. Same levels occurring. It was probably just reported more as it was hyped up at the time, and that's from Bertie. Nigel, I have no doubt there has been a huge increase in the reported number of hate incidents. I also have no doubt that 99% have been reported by Remainers, and that's come in anonymously. Uh, Mr Farage, uh, we have had hate crime before we voted leave. Of course we have. So they are bound to blame Brexit. I think Bre Brexit will get blamed for everything as time goes on. And that's Cathy in Southampton. Uh, Natasha says on Facebook, hate crime is what the left media wants it to be called. Everyone has the right to express their likes and dislikes without being tagged racist. And Phil Martin says, the ones who commit the most hate crimes are the ones who claim to be the most tolerant. Well, Phil Martin, let me tell you my experience of what this country has been like since that vote on June the 23rd. On the 24th at lunchtime, I went to, but midday it was. And, I, and what was there to do at midday? We just won a referendum, but to go to the Marquis of Granby in Westminster. And I had to be hustled out of there very, very quickly. So uh, threatening, aggressive uh, were people who'd been on the Remain side. I thought perhaps that was just a sort of short-term thing. Actually, what I saw, uh, was a most extraordinary level of intolerance, aggression, abuse, threats, and that's just walking down the street, let alone the death threats and goodness knows what else uh, that have happened online. And I'm not alone. Uh, there are Tory MPs, there are Labour MPs, and please, if you are a an MP that was on the Leave side and you've seen this, then please do call in and share this. Actually, all these organisations who say they're about love and everything else seem to have a total hatred of those with a different opinion, so much so they don't think we're even entitled to have the view. I mean, goodness me, they've even called us racists for daring to discuss controlling immigration. So I have to say that, uh, you know, I take, I do take what Sir Phil, our pharmacist from Peterborough, says. I, I'm, I'm, I'm certain that in the few days that followed that referendum, things were said that shouldn't have been. But my point, folks, is things were said on both sides that shouldn't have been. Of that, I'm certain. I know. I've been on the sharp end of it myself. Uh, and I think the idea that because we voted Brexit, that somehow the Leave campaigners had whipped up this feeling in the country, I did not hear a single person that was advocating Leave on radio, on telly, in a newspaper, online, saying the reason we must do this is because we hate all of these people coming in from the rest of the European Union. I think the whole thing has been grossly exaggerated. That's my view. I wonder what Anthony in Enfield thinks. What's your view, Anthony? 
Uh, hi, Nigel. Uh, good evening. Hi. Uh, Nigel, you just spoke about your experiences in regards to being um, on the uh, sort of, uh, you know, bad end of uh, death threats and, and that sort of thing. And yeah. some people may say that perhaps you put yourself in that position, which I don't agree because no one should experience uh, such behaviour. But some people may argue that you put yourself in that position uh, due to you being such a controversial character. But I'd like you to think about one thing for a moment. Yeah? Yep. Some people have never put themselves in that position. It may just be because they look different um, from the indigenous and therefore they may court behaviour um, that you have just mentioned in terms of yourself, which I deem as unacceptable. But I also think you're a hypocrite, Nigel. Um, and you do lead people. You know, you're very smart in terms of leading questions and you steer people in terms of how you see the world, which I think you're a very, very dangerous individual. But I will say to you, pot and kettle comes to mind. Yeah, and you talk about over-egging over the cake and you talk about exaggeration or being grossly exaggerated. Yep. That makes yep. no difference. The fact that there has been an increase, which I'm sure that you wouldn't uh, disagree with that. Yeah, we can always argue uh, the numbers, but there has been an increase. Yeah, and that increase can be pinpointed from that time of Brexit. Now, you did something very irresponsible in terms of the lead-up to um, the uh, vote, um, in terms of the referendum, which was to show a poster, which I think someone in your position, which can... Uh, you know, um, you know, you've got um, airtime on the TV and on the radio and LBC and, and, and so forth, yeah, which was very irresponsible to show that poster that you did. And I don't know if you're man enough to admit that perhaps that was perhaps not the right thing to have done at the time. And that would feed into people's fears. So what we're seeing at the moment is we're seeing this polarisation that you're either extreme left and you're either extreme right. But it's leaders and people like yourself that people will look to for guidance. So when they see the world is falling apart, when they see that perhaps their economy, local economy, the country's economy, perhaps isn't where they want it to be, then that's a very, very, very dangerous situation that we're in, as we saw when Hitler came to power, and he wasn't popular at first, as you know, and we know what happened in the German economy, and what he then was in terms of his rhetoric. I don't think, Anthony, Anthony, I, I, come on, hang on a sec. You know, I mean, I've listened very carefully to all the points you've made. When you start talking about Hitler, then I think you're over-egging the pudding in quite a big way. Um, you say that I'm controversial. Well, I'm not sure I'm that controversial. All I've ever said is we should govern our own country, make our own laws, control our own borders, and re-engage with countries around the world like the Commonwealth. Fascinatingly, Anthony, virtually everything I've been saying for 20 years is now being said, let's hope it gets done, but is being said by the Prime Minister. So maybe she now is a controversial figure that will attract hate for saying the same things that I said. Um, as far as that poster was concerned, uh, Anthony, I, I launched that poster uh, because it was about Angela Merkel. It was about Merkel's madness, which, by the way, she's U-turned on this week, um, of saying to people, anyone can come. And those people weren't refugees, Anthony. They were young males. They were economic migrants rushing to get into Europe because of what Merkel said. And what the poster said was, the EU has failed us all. I can't apologise for the truth. Absolutely not. Uh, but what I do think, what I do think is that tensions were high on both sides. And, you know, Anthony, I take your point. And, by the way, I'm, I'm conceding that bad things were said post the referendum. I think bad things were said on both sides post the referendum. Do you know, when England played Germany at football, people in pubs sing two world wars and one world cup. That's pretty insulting, isn't it? You know, major national events do lead to this. But do you honestly, Anthony, do you, I mean, you know, <laughs> tell me, do you really think that people like me or Boris Johnson stirred up hatred in our Leave campaign. Hello? Hello, Hello. Anthony. Oh, sorry, you're still there. Sorry, hey, I'm, I'm asking, asking you. The... I'm asking oh, you. Was... Did we, sorry, was... did we oh, stir up? Sorry. Don't Anthony, I'm going to have to keep up with you, mate. Sorry, we've, we, we've given up our best shot there. Um, I'm going to go to Tim in Chesterfield. Tim, um, you know... Did the Leave campaign stir up hatred in people? Did that lead to a, lead to a rise in a, a huge spike in hate crime immediately afterwards? Yes. OK, go on, tell me why. Because you exist. 
All right. Well, we've really, really hit the peaks here, haven't we? So we'll move on to Webby in Stockport. Webby, uh, what's your experience in Stockport? How, what was it like in Stockport after the referendum result? Um, hi, Nigel. Um, to be honest, um, the hate of crime and racism has always existed in this country, even before the referendum. Um, however, since it has increased, I think it has gave them, as the other guy was saying, is like uh, something. It has like um, give them a freedom to be more racist and more um, hating other other races, other um, communities. Um, I myself I... experienced. A, a, my car being vandalized three times yeah. um, without talking about um, those abuse messages on Facebook and on social media. Um, so it's, it's, I, it's, I believe it has massively increased. And the bigger question is, what is the government doing about it? And what are the police are doing about it? Well, maybe where the good news is that even if that, and, and look, no one doubts there was an increase, but I'm making the point very strongly in this part of the programme that actually Leave campaigners receive the most, extra and continue to receive the most extraordinary abuse. The good news, Webby, of course, is the police do say those figures are now tailing off, so maybe that's a good thing. Um, but I would just say this to you. Um, you said that you know, there'd been a lot of hatred and racism in this country way before the referendum had even been called. And that's undoubtedly true. But let me tell you this, after my experience of 19 years working in Europe itself, I think that we have always been and continue to be the most tolerant country in Europe. And last night on the show, Webby, I talked about this big Chatham House poll, talking about attitudes towards immigration. And, and there were fewer people in Britain that wanted to ban people coming from Muslim countries than any of the other European countries. No country is perfect, Webby. I'm sorry that your car has been vandalised and you've had a bad time, uh, but I do not think there has been a massive spike in hate crimes because of that referendum. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show, exclusively on LBC, live from Strasbourg. It's 7.30 and time for the news with Rupert Barsia. President Trump has told the Israeli Prime Minister to hold off on building new settlements on the West Bank. He's been meeting Benjamin Netanyahu at the White House and is urging both Israel and the Palestinians to show flexibility if there's to be a meaningful peace deal. Leading figures in the Church of England have voted to reject a controversial report on same-sex marriage. It called for a fresh tone towards gay people, but not a change in the church's opposition to same-sex marriage. And thousands of Tata steel workers have agreed to changes in their pensions to safeguard jobs and guarantee investment in Britain, but the agreement means their pensions will be less generous. LBC weather. A mix of cloud, wind and rain into the evening, a low of 5 Celsius. Showers and sunny spells tomorrow, a high of 13 degrees. LBC Travel. Good evening, I'm Andy Lake. We're still very slow on parts of the M25 this evening. First of all, it's slow. We're coming both ways between 11 for Chertsey and 15 for the M4. Anti-clockwise also heavy between 9 for Leatherhead and 6 for Godston. That's not been held by an accident earlier on. The A2 is queuing heading out of London from just after the Blackpool Tunnel to the Eltham Tunnel after an accident and a breakdown on the opposite side. In Croydon, Wellesley Road still suffering long delays northbound between the Croydon Underpass and Bedford Park heading into the roadworks there. The North Circular has delays eastbound between the High Road and East Finchley and the Clockhouse Interchange in Palmer's Green. That's not been helped by roadworks in Bounds Green. Also queues on the North Circular westbound between the Cricket Bullet Interchange in Walthamstow and the 4th Street Tunnel in Edmonton after an accident there. In Worcestershire, the M5 is queuing northbound between Junction 4A for the M42 and 3 for Birmingham. There was a collision earlier. A lane still closed as the barrier repairs continue, coming the other way also still slow. For more real-time traffic updates, go to lbc.co.uk. This is LBC. Now, the following information will only be of interest to more successful investors. Ah, I thought that might include you. You're obviously someone with a great track record and excellent liquidity who could be drawn in by the flattery of an investment scammer. At the Financial Conduct Authority, we're committed to keeping you safe. So if you've been offered an unsolicited investment opportunity, be a scam smart investor and check the FCA warning list of firms to avoid at fca.org.uk slash scam smart. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome on board. KLM Royal Dutch Airlines is pleased to announce imminent departures from London City Airport. Booking a business trip or the dream holiday? KLM has started its own services from London City Airport, flying you from the heart of London to Amsterdam and the world. Tokyo, Shanghai, Lagos, Dubai, and many more. 
Book now at klm.com. Sit back, relax, and enjoy your flight. Do you have a pension? Maybe you've got more than one. How do you know if they're in the right pension funds, making as much money as possible for your retirement? Answer is, you probably don't. At The Pension Works, our fully qualified independent financial advisors could add instant value to your retirement fund. Simply text the word YES to 8322 for your free Pension Works health check. That's YES to 8322 today. Your pensions working harder with The Pension Works. An amazing kitchen, an amazing bathroom, an amazing hallway. At Amazing Tiles, our range of porcelain, ceramic and bespoke tiles can make any home amazing. Right now, buy five metres or more of plain tiles and get a third off the retail price. Visit our showroom and warehouse at Park Royal Road, London or call 0208 83 84 900. Make your home amazing at AmazingTiles.com. La La Land is the feel-good film of the year and is now the biggest winner at this year's BAFTAs with an incredible five awards, including Best Film, Best Director and Leading Actress, Emma Stone. It's very, very exciting. It's sheer perfection. La La Land. Don't miss it on the big screen in cinemas now. Now, someone as discerning as you could be drawn in by the flattery of an investment scammer. Be a scam smart investor. Check the FCA warning list before investing. This is LBC, live from Strasbourg, The Nigel Farage Show. Call 0345 6060 973, text 84850. Tweet at LBC using the hashtag Farage on LBC. We're you know, asking ourselves, was this so-called massive surge in hate crime following the Leave vote in the referendum exaggerated and views coming in on both sides? But one quick stop press. So the European Commission today have issued a report saying it's going to be too complicated, too tricky, too difficult to disengage the United Kingdom from the common fisheries policy. It's too complex. And isn't it interesting that in the government's own white paper, and when Theresa May issued that a couple of weeks back, remember I commented, I said there's something missing here. It's called fishing. In the government's own white paper, they said this. In 2015, EU vessels caught 683,000 tonnes of fish in UK waters. UK vessels caught 111,000 tonnes of fish in UK waters, with no added comment at all and the truth comes out today it's going to be too difficult and George Eustace our fisheries minister says oh now we've got Brexit we can negotiate a better deal with our EU partners we don't want a better deal with our EU partners we want to be like Norway Iceland and normal countries we want our territorial fishing waters back Mrs May and if you don't deliver that we have not got the Brexit people thought they were voting for and one other little story out today, European related, is the European Commission today have given the United Kingdom our final warning over air pollution. Now, this has been rumbling on since 2010, and to be fair, it's not just the UK they're threatening. Uh, but we're facing the possibility of a £300 million fine because the air quality in our cities isn't good enough. Funny, isn't it? We get a southeasterly wind uh, and all the pollution from Germany uh, comes to British cities and we're told it's our fault. I suggest we leave quickly and we don't pay a £300 million fine. Back to our question. No one doubts, surely no one doubts, that bad things were said on both sides, both during and since that dramatic referendum on June the 23rd last year. But has there been a dramatic spike in hate crime, or have there just been more crimes reported, or incidents reported? And I wonder what Leon in South Norwood makes of this. Leon, good evening. Hi, Nigel. How are you doing? I'm all right. What do you think about this? Well, you know, I'll be honest with you. I don't think personally there's been a spike in hate crimes. And the reason why I say this is this. Uh, hate crimes have always been around, OK? And I'll draw a parallel. If you look at uh, the way the media reports uh, the rise of the far right, um, they talk about, they connect it to um, Islamic extremism, OK? And yeah. um, I can tell you, as a black person, growing up in the UK, parents, uh, parents are Jamaicans, of immigrants, uh, uh, countless uh, situations where, where, where we've, we've witnessed uh, situations with the far right during the time I've been raised. But the media chooses to 
to report certain things, to justify certain things. And what they're doing now is justifying um, for, for the Remainers the, the situation with hate crimes. Do you understand me? Are you with me? Yeah, I am with you. I mean, tell me, Leon, how big is the far right in South Norwood? Well, it's not big in South Norwood, but they've always no. been there. The presence has been there for the last 20, 30, 40, not in South Norwood, but in many parts of the country. OK, and you can ask any non-white person in certain parts of London, Bermondsey, certain parts of Bethnal Green. There are certain parts yeah. of Birmingham, Pipe Hayes. My uncle was stabbed in the early 90s just for being black, being in the wrong place. There are certain places mm. you cannot go as a person of colour uh, after a certain uh, time of day. And these situations always been there, but they, they, they talk about it now the last four or five years. So what's new to many people um, is not new to, to other people. Do you understand me? For some people... It's yeah, I do. Phenomenon. Did the... I mean, I mean, the referendum itself... I mean, was not a. I mean, there was no issue of black versus white in the referendum, Leon. I mean, I didn't see it. Did you see it in South Norwood? Absolutely not. But the point I was just trying to draw a parallel. What I'm saying is that yeah. hate crimes have yeah. all been around. Yeah, yes, of course, okay. of course. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No, of course, of course. But Leon, I would say to you uh, that, that when I compare that to the rest of Europe, I think we are the most tolerant, easygoing country in the whole of Europe, personally. I've, I've just I've just moved back from Sweden. I've spent the last 15 years in Sweden. Three years. Uh, in between Spain and Norway. I've just moved back. I've been back in England four weeks after being abroad yeah. for 18 years. So I've got some great experience of how it is in Europe. Uh, and, uh, yeah, England is absolutely, absolutely one of the most tolerant countries. And this is one of the reasons why I actually moved back, because the thing I love about this country, and I must say, we, we are probably the only country in the EU and, and or a great part of Europe that does not have a far-right government in the parliamentary system, and that is something that, that I'm proud of with the UK. Leon, fantastic. You've made that point and you've got experience of living over Europe. You've made that point beautifully. Thank you. Yes, no country is perfect, but goodness me, we're a damn sight better, I think, than the rest of Europe. Um, I'm going to ask Aftab in Dagenham, did you see, did you see a genuine spike in hate speech following that referendum result, Aftab? Hi, Nigel. Yes, I did. I'm astonished you did. that you can even be so dismissive of what is fact. Of evidence. I'm not dismissive, okay. Aftab. I'm not dismissive. Cool. I'm, 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 I'm acknowledging mm -hmm. that after mm -hmm. a major national event, all sorts of things get said. I'm questioning mm -hmm. whether it was this dramatic spike that some people have... To. Yeah. Go on. Yes. Well, well, the question then is, if given that nothing else changed, and the only, the only thing that was changed was the Brexit vote, what else can you attribute, attribute it to other than the fact that it was Brexit... And the campaign that was led, and how it emboldened certain people to actually be more vocal with their racism. I mean, I myself personally experienced it. To, to be so dismissive of that, I don't know how you you can say it wasn't a trip to Brexit. It was something completely something else. I don't, I don't know. No, what no, no. Think it's no, 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 no. No, no, please, I'm not being dismissive at all. You know, I've listened to the calls tonight and, I, and I've got my own mailbag as an MEP and there's no doubt bad things were said. I'm acknowledging that. I suspect, actually, though, what did happen was a lot more hate incidents were reported and given they can be reported by third parties and not the actual victim themselves, I think perhaps we exaggerated it a bit. That's I'm all I'm saying. I'm up on that. Just because the, the very fact that you're using the word hate incident. What is being reported is a hate crime. There is a difference. Do you know the difference? Do you know... Yeah, I've got all, yeah, I've got all the definitions here in front of me. And most, and most reports, most reports are logged as incidents, but not logged as crimes. Very good. And yet the, report, the Press Association uh, reported a 50% increase in hate crime. Not incident, but a hate crime which means a crime was committed, which therefore begs the question, if it wasn't Brexit, which emboldened a racist or whoever you wish to call, uh, attribute it to, what was the actual driving factor that we saw this increase? And this is simple to statistics that, that, we, that we're being discussed here. And, I, I, and well, I'll leave it for you to answer, to explain that. Well, I think that you know, how we categorise crime, you know, the first caller on tonight said if she has an altercation, a physical altercation with her neighbour, uh, you know, the fact that they come from another part of the world, that could be logged as an altercation, but equally it could be logged as a hate incident stroke crime. So there are lots of ways of defining this. Aftab, I'm sorry if you took but abuse think... after the referendum, but I honestly, I, I mean, let me ask you this. Has it now settled down? Has it settled down? Um... Yeah. Well, in terms of my personal experience, I haven't looked at the stats, 
Uh, yes, it has. I had a couple of incidents. Uh, thankfully, I haven't experienced that now. But, you know, what, 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 what we generally see is this tends to happen. We saw it after post, and it emboldens it. The previous time this happened is, would you like to win the previous time I was involved in a recent incident prior to Brexit? When UKIP were out campaigning, general election 2015. That's the last wow. time. And sadly, that is what happened. As I've explained, as I've explained to many people before, that what it does is embolden certain races who feel rightly or wrongly that this is what to UKIP stands for. Well, well, well. Do you know what? Do, do you know what? Have tab. Do you know what? Have tab. If it wasn't for UKIP campaigning in Dagenham, it'd be the BMP campaigning in Dagenham, and it's very different. And and just one point that until the police release the information that says each crime is related to Brexit, it's unfair to relate the two because we just don't know. But have tab, you put your points uh, emotionally and powerfully and well. And yes, it's interesting, isn't it? Actually, one of the reasons UKIP's taken this abuse is because the BMP have literally just disappeared up their own fundament. Uh, your Facebook messages. Peter Howan says, maybe successive governments are at fault for the state of UK public services. Do you seriously believe it's all due to the immigrants? Get real. Uh, well, Peter, um, whether we talk about uh, public services or housing, the fact is our population is rising by half a million people every single year. Ben Atherton says on Facebook, the lefty liberals have had it their own way for far too long. Now they are fighting back and they are becoming violent. Well, they're certainly becoming quite aggressive, Ben. Uh, Texan tweets, the media operate dual standards. When a foreigner is attacked, it's a hate crime. When a foreigner attacks and even murders, it is not. Dear Nigel, regardless of a spike on hate crime, either way, how much responsibility do you believe public figures should have on either side for the levels of hate crime in the UK today? Joshua in Bournemouth. Joshua, that is a really brilliant question, and I'm going to come back to that uh, in a moment. But right now, you're listening to Nigel Farage, live from here in Strasbourg. The time is 7.45. Coming up at 8 on LBC, Clive Bull. Hate crimes, abuse and name-calling. Do you think the EU referendum has made Britain an angrier, more divided country? Clive Bull on LBC. What is the only bird that can fly backwards? What's the name for a fear of cheese? What are the pieces of paper from a hole punch called? If you know, you have exceptional general knowledge. But at Hiscox, our insurance experts have chosen small business as their specialist subject. That's why more than 200,000 UK businesses rely on us to help provide the right cover. Hiscox. Business insurance for the small and the brave. And the answers? A. The Hummingbird. B. Turophobia. C. Chads. On the 25th of October 2016, the government announced Heathrow as its preferred scheme for new airport capacity in the South East. A national consultation is now underway to discuss what happens next. Go online to find out more. More about what expansion at Heathrow Airport may mean for the United Kingdom as a whole. And more about what it could mean for your own region. And quite simply, to have your say. Search Heathrow Airport Expansion. Come and experience Lebanese dining at Marouche Restaurants. Try some of our amazing dishes, kafta dipped in a delicious hummus, or a colourful meze, complemented by a robust Lebanese red. With live music and traditional belly dancing, enjoy an atmosphere to match the food's rich and distinctive flavours. Go to marouche.com to find out more. Marouche Restaurants, the finest Lebanese food across London. At Oak Furniture Land, everyone knows our furniture is 100% real hardwood. And it's also 50% off. But most importantly, it's 100% real hardwood. Yes, but don't forget, it's also 50% off. At Oak Furniture Land, quality and price are both important. So make sure you don't miss our February Super Sale, where everything's 100% real hardwood. With up to 50% off. Our February Super Sale ends this Sunday. Visit oakfurnitureland.co.uk to find your nearest store. A big night out, a lumpy bed. There are so many things that can keep us awake. But if you can't sleep because you're worried about paying the bills, we can help. Capitalize provides free, impartial and confidential face-to-face -face support to help people in trouble manage their debt. Find out more at capitalize.org.uk. Buying a new car is so exciting, but at the same time, a bit daunting. Trudging around the dealers, haggling over price, always wondering if you're getting a good deal. 
But with CarWow, there's none of that. Just select the car you want and CarWow brings you the best prices from their network of top dealers. All you have to do is choose which one to buy from. It's car buying with you in the driving seat. Search CarWow and try it today. The Nigel Farage Show, live from Strasbourg, only on LBC. A press association report today shows that there was a significant, a 50% increase in reported hate crime and incidents in this country following the referendum. The question is, is it just more reporting and has the whole thing been somewhat exaggerated? Now, before the break, Joshua asked that question. He said, how much responsibility do politicians on both sides of the argument have for an increase in hate crime? Well, Joshua, the answer is, of course they have responsibility. I have been called sexist, homophobe, little Englander, hater. I mean, there is no term of abuse that has not been thrown at me by politicians on the other side over the last 15 to 20 years. And yet yeah, I've said one or two pretty sharp things back, but nothing ever, ever in line with that. And I would just say this to you, Joshua, that people may not have liked some of the realities, some of the facts and figures, some of the images that were used by the Leave campaign. But at no point did anybody in the Leave campaign ever, ever incite anyone to be nasty to people on the basis of where they came from. In fact, quite the opposite. You know, we made the point that if we had back proper border controls, then race relations, which are, by the way, the best in Britain, <laughs> far better in Britain than the rest of Europe, would improve further still. So, Joshua, politicians do bear responsibility, but I genuinely do not think the Leave campaign opened the door to any of this. Now, interestingly, uh, the one county that saw the biggest increase in reported hate crime was that of Dorset. And our next caller is Edward in Lyme Regis. What is going on, Edward, in Lyme Regis? Hi there. Well, I, I don't think there's a spike at all. I think there's just, there's just been a lot more sensitivity, basically. Yeah. I think that um, I think people always divide. People naturally divide. That's why you have places like Chinatown and things like that, and you know, in big cities. And in difficult times, people naturally split up a bit more. And it's, it's, that is basically it's, it's human human nature. So you, you cannot. You have to have one culture. You cannot. You cannot. You cannot. You cannot mollycoddle to everybody, sort of thing. If you sort of say, I'm getting a bit lost here, but well, passions were—I mean, passions, Edward, were raised by the referendum and all sorts of things. And certainly, I mean, June the 24th, I've never seen uh, the country so polar in a sense. There were people cheering and there were people crying, and and, mm. and you know, it was a very, very big moment. I mean, in many ways, general elections are a bit like that, aren't they? You think about it. I mean, just look at what gets said, campaigning on the streets between activists in the Labour Party, the Lib Dems, the Tories, you yeah. whoever it is. Um, so, 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 you know, passions do get raised by these events. But no, Dorset, you are the number one part of this country, Edward, for <laughs> a huge 100% spike well, in Dorset. In, 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 complete but, rubbish. But, <laughs> you, it's complete rubbish. Edward, I, think, yeah. I, th I thank you and enjoy the beautiful Lyme Regis. Uh, your uh, Facebook messages, texts and tweets, uh, do we need to get bogged down in the technicalities of this debate? Or should we recognise that the referendum led to a vast increase in hostilities towards migrants from both inside and outside of the EU? Well, Sam, it also led to a vast increase in hostility against Leave campaigners. Uh, the Remainers expressed open hatred for those who voted leave. Well, I've certainly experienced that. A great one here. In denial again, Nigel. Amazing how some folk deny statistics and evidence. Also, remember Joe Cox's murder. Deny and ignore all you like. UKIP has contributed to the rise in hate crime. Well, do you know what? You're absolutely right. I shouldn't have bothered. I should have just let Nick Griffin and the BMP do it all. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't you be happy? Um, and my last uh, text here for the moment. Uh, there's no way that the Leave campaign stirred up hatred that's just a load of absolute nonsense. Anger in our society long predates the referendum. You're right about that, Nigel. And that's Alan in London. And I've got Hassan in Southgate. Hassan, how did the referendum impact you there in Southgate? Um, there, there has been impact in Southgate. I'm, I'm not going to deny it. And, but I'm not yep. going to sit here and um, sort of uh, over-exaggerate it and make out like Southgate has changed detrimentally and I'm no longer happy there. Um, I am British born. Yes. Uh, I am 
also a Remain voter, but I am also of uh, Turkish Cypriot origin. So I do have an obvious Mediterranean look about me. Now, I'm not going to deny it as well. I have faced, uh, let's say, comments that I wouldn't have, um, you know, I wouldn't necessarily like to make myself about other cultures. Um, Off-the-cuff jokes that have become normalised, such as, we've voted leave now, when are you leaving? <laughs> yep. Things, yeah. Things yeah, I'm like sure. No, no, I'm sure that's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, now, yeah that yeah, is going yeah. on, and they are. Let's, is it? But has, let's, has let's Hassan? Is it being? Hassan, just tell me: is that being done with malice, or is it being done in genuine, friendly, jocular jest? Well, this is what I was going to say. I mean, that it depends on who it's coming from. Um, yeah. There's been incidents where I would, I quite known, knowingly known that the person has said it with no malice at all. And it's just become a a general joke. It's something that's going on. It's in the media at the moment. Everybody has a bit of a joke about it. Um, But on the other hand, there are some people who, when they say it, you can see that they mean it. And to the core, have, you know, a a racist or um, not necessarily racist, but hatred at least, you know, deep within them. Now, I'm not going to deny you've been making the comments a lot throughout the show this evening. This hatred um, and this rhetoric is something that has pre-existed uh, Brexit. It's, you know, that yes, it's, stupid yes. to, it's stupid to deny that. But what I would say is that Brexit has opened the doors um, and made it more acceptable and given voice and emboldened um, people with those views. And I'll explain why. Um, in this country, I believe that we have um, a culture for blame. Now, I'm going to make some quite historical, but point and point. If we look at, for example, our performance in football, let's go back to Euro 96. We right. had an abysmal performance. We lost the tournament. And then what did the entire country blame our performance on was the color of the kit. It was a gray color. And it was said that because of the kit was gray and so dull and boring, it was demoralizing and took away the, you know, I think, Hassan, with respect, I think we're deviating off the point a bit here, mate. I mean, I mean interesting though it is, um, but, but, but just, just, just let me ask you one last quick point, because lots of other people want, want to get on the line. You know, you said you said you saw what you saw after the referendum. Do you think we're now back to normality? When not back to normality, um, I think times have changed. I don't think we'll ever go back to what we knew uh, no. Britain to be before. I don't think things will ever be the same. And I do think that, you know, the, what people are complaining about, racist acts and so on, they have increased. It is directly linked to Brexit. And I think a lot of it is because we have a blame culture in this country. You've opened the doors by saying, look, the problem is immigration. The problem is we have no control on our borders and so on. And the, well, therefore, you've given a reason. You've pointed I think I, I, I think, Hassan, to be honest, to be honest, for the 20 years before that, you weren't even allowed to discuss it. So the fact we did discuss it did raise passions. I thank you for your call. Uh, Mr Farage, you appear to be a one-trick pony. Have you any policy ideas to make Britain great again, apart from divide and conquer? Peter in Glasgow. Yes, Peter, I really, really do. Let's re-engage with the rest of the world. Let's govern ourselves. Let's be confident. And let's have a skills based immigration policy like Australia. That's a start, Peter. Hi, Nigel. I believe that in a prosperous society, there is no hate crime. Hate crime is a sign that some people are not doing well. George. Nigel, hate crime has always been here. I remember the National Front marching and the BNP in Dagenham. Stephen, the London cabbie. Well, Stephen, I made the point uh, that UKIP uh, now is strong in places like Dagenham, and it is a non-racist, non-sectarian party with lots and lots of people from ethnic minorities and all religions and all orientations active within the party. And I'm going to go, my last caller of the evening is Will in Levington Spa. Will, what did you see in Levington Spa? Oh, hi, Nigel. Uh, It's good to be on. Um, Well, basically what I wanted to say was the fact that I think most of this is actually caused by left-wing sort of media and parties, because what they do is something like UKIP's position, which was a completely logical position, is made out to be some sort of balmy racist thing. So then all these yes. racists that are, what, let's say 0.1% of the population, then go, oh, 15% of people agree with me. So they then, then get a sort of certified view, while at the same time everyone else is in hysteria because they think 15% of the population is agreeing with some sort of racist um, sort of crackpot view, when in reality it's just the fact that there's such a biased representation of what the viewpoints actually are. 
that well, everyone thinks I think will. And you can see the same with Trump in America. Is that right? I think you're right, Will, because I think you're right, Will, because actually I have been through years of being the only person saying we should have an Australian-style point system. Myself and my UKIP colleagues, mercifully in the referendum, others joined us. Will, thank you. You're my last caller of this evening. We've got through a shed load tonight of, of texts and Facebook messages and everything else. And my final thought on this is no one in the Leave campaign wanted to stir up hatred in this country in any way at all. Those of you out there that did use uh, the excuse of Brexit to be pretty beastly and horrid and abusive and racist to your neighbours and friends, well, stop it. Shut up. Go home and lock the door. We don't want to see you again. Our country is a great tolerant country, the most tolerant country in the whole of Europe. Uh, there was a, an increase in nastiness after that referendum. There was not a surge in hate crime. We're getting back to normal, I'm pleased to say. You've been listening to The Nigel Farage Show here on LBC, live from Strasbourg. I'm back tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock in London. Coming up at 10, it's Ian Collins. But up next, it's Clive Bull. Nigel, thank you. And we're going to continue this theme uh, to a certain extent. Hate...